friends of all kinds of all sports, welcome back to a very special edition of Max on Boxing Live Weigh In Edition for the Teofimo Lopez, the return of the sensational Teofimo Lopez against Pedro Campa at Teofimo's debut at 140 pounds. Lopez, of course, welcome in Hall of Future Hall of Famer Tim Bradley to the show. And uh, Tim, Teofimo Lopez, the takeover, he was good to his word. He got matched up against Vasily Lomachenko, who looked unbeatable and outthought him and outfought him and won the title was on top of the world and then lost it in his first defense. But not without a real excuse, Tim. He had air in his lung where it wasn't supposed to be. The doctor said after the fight he could have died with that condition. He went the distance. He knocked he knocked Cambosis down late after being dropped early and almost won the thing. What does Tio have to do in this fight to put himself back on top, Tim? All he needs to do is knock out Pedro Campa tomorrow night. That's all he needs to do. And I think he would do it, Max. I honestly do. I think Campa is the perfect tailor-made type of fight opponent for him. I think that, you know... Tao needs his confidence back, and this is what this is all about. Top rank is giving him a soft touch so he can get his confidence back, so that way he can be in the running at 140 pounds after this defeat tomorrow. He has been sensational at times. Among He's turned in consistently sensational performances, but that was at lightweight. Now, he was killing himself to make the weight. He probably shouldn't have been at lightweight the last couple of years. Now he moves up to 140 pounds, should be bigger, stronger, more comfortable, but, Tim, he's also hitting... Bigger guys, will he keep the power at 140? I think he keeps the power at 140, and I also think that he knocks out Kampa because Kampa has already been out before with a lesser opponent. Tao has power in both hands. I believe he gets the knockout tomorrow before six rounds. So, meantime, the m main event is obviously Teofimo Lopez. The co-feature is the outstanding Xander Zayas against Elias Espadas. Mark Chinook with those fighters weighing in. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome inside Resorts World here in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. This is boxing, this is top rank presented by Hall of Fame boxing promoter, Mr. Bob Arum. It is now time to weigh in our co-feature of the evening, eight rounds for the NABO junior middleweight title. Please welcome from Merida, Mexico, Elias, the Latin kid, Espadas, and his opponent from San Juan, Puerto Rico, Xander Zayas. First on the scale from Merida, Mexico, Elias, the Latin kid, Espadas. One fifty three point six. One fifty three point six. One fifty three point six for the Latin kid Espadas. And his opponent now making his way to the scale from San Juan, Puerto Rico, Xander Zayas. One fifty three. One five three, one fifty three on the nose for Xander Zayas. Tim Bradley, top rank is probably the best all time at building fighters, bringing them along in fights where they learn, but they also impress. Zayas is an incredible talent and has been very impressive. What are you expecting here? Max, I'm expecting a dominant performance from this young man. Max, have you ever heard of my double stamped? When I double stamp opponents, Max, when I double stamp you right out the you gate. Double yes, Zayas is my double stamped uh, prospect. When I double stamp you, what it means is, is that you are going to be potentially a world champion down the line. This is going to take a few years, but he will be a world champion in my eyes, and here's why. Young man has speed, he has power. He also has counter-punching ability. He can move. He can fight off the back foot. He can fight off the front foot. There's nothing that this young man can't do. And on top of that, he lives like a Spartan. He lives the life of a fighter. You know, he said, I'm married to the game. I don't have a girlfriend. Boxing is my love. This young man's going to the top. He's going to be the next Puerto Rican superstar. 
ton of talent and the skill and discipline to go with it. Back to Mark Chinook, because the main event fighters are about to weigh in. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to weigh in our main event. Ten rounds for the vacant NABF and WBO Junior Welterweight International titles. Please welcome from Sonora, Mexico, Pedro La Roca Campa. And his opponent from Brooklyn, New York, the takeover, Teofimo Lopez. First on the scale from Sonora, Mexico, Pedro La Roca Making his way to the stage and taking the scale from Brooklyn, New York, the takeover, Tifima Lopez. One thirty eight point eight. One thirty eight point eight. One thirty eight point eight. For the takeover, Tifimo Lopez. Tim, when when you've had a hard time making the lightweight limit for years now, and you move up in weight, sometimes people can hear that as an excuse. You don't feel like making the weight anymore. But when I see a guy move up and they then weigh in over a pound under the limit at 140, it tells me that he is in fighting shape. What do you see here? I, I, exactly, he's in phenomenal shape. This young man, I'm telling you, Max. He is an angry loser. He does not want to feel that same sensation that he felt some months ago against Cambosis. He is out for vengeance. He wants to knock out Kampa. I talked to him in the fighter meetings. He's excited about this fight, and I'm glad he's back, baby. It's interesting. The two most impressive performances of his career were Lomachenko, and then given the circumstances of the fight, maybe the loss to Cambosis. In many ways, a very impressive championship performance. We'll be right back.
It is time for the takeover. Trying to put on a show here. My, oh my, was that something. Oh, what a big shot by Lopez. There it is. He has done it. And we are back live for the return of the sensational Teofimo Lopez in against Pedro Campa tomorrow night in his debut at 140 pounds. There he is. Teofimo, when I hear a guy wants to move up in weight, a lot of boxing fans, the first thing they think is, ah, he's being lazy, he doesn't want to make the weight anymore. But in your case, you're a big-boned kid. You probably should have been at 140 a couple years ago. And you come in under 139. You're nowhere near the limit. What does that say about your preparation for this camp? Focused, you know, determined, determined, uh, ready, disciplined. I've, I've been undefeated on the scale 188 times now. So, you know, this is, uh, this is amazing. It's an amazing feeling. Let's me know I'm well prepped for this fight. My energy is up, you know, and uh, just here to shock the world again. Do you feel different? not having to make 135 pounds? Is, your, is there less focus on having to make the weight more on boxing during training camp? Do you feel stronger and healthier right now? Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I feel great, you know. I feel like the greatest right now. You know, um, those, ex, those last three, four pounds were killing me, man. So, you know, it's all about now just uh, not worrying about that, just taking my time with everything and just really uh, focusing on what is going to be the best things for me, and that's 140 division right now. You're one of these dudes who, when the lights shine brightest, you seem to perform the best. But now, it's not just that you're more comfortable at a weight. You're hitting bigger guys now here at your debut at 140. Is it on your mind, national audience, the return of tail, I, that you want to look sensational? Do you want to knock them out and have one of those performances that we've come to expect from you? I look at it like this. You know, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. You know, and the nicer it looks. So, <laughs> I just, uh, I'm someone that is all about just entertaining the crowd, really, more, more than anything. You know, the knockout will come. You know, I have power in both hands. I'm quick. I'm intelligent when I'm in the ring. As you guys can see with my last performance against Vasily Lomachenko outside of Cambosis. You know, so all those things come to play, you know, especially come tomorrow night. You know, I'm focused. I'm determined, like I said before. And uh, I just really want to give everyone an eye candy performance. Hey, Tio. If someone asked you your two best performances, your two most pre impressive performances, I would say your last two. The win against Lomachenko, where you outthought and outfought him, which everyone thought was impossible to do. And then the loss to Cambosis, where you come in the ring with a life threatening condition you weren't really fully aware of at the time. You get dropped early, but you rally late, you go the distance, you drop him late, and you lose a close decision. In many ways, that revealed more about you than all the fights you'd had up until that point. Do you have any sense of pride about the loss to Cambosis? Uh, to be honest, no, I don't. You know, I don't hold anything. I mean, what I do actually after every fight. You know, um, I take it in, you know. I'm just uh, someone that really takes everything in as what it is and uh, just move forward from it, you know. Um, listen, you know, I, I busted my ass fighting that fight, you know, 12 rounds uh, with my conditions, you know, or anything like that. It's just all about pushing forward now, you know. Um, really, I, I can't focus on the past. Just got to focus on, the, on what's the task right now and focus uh, after that. You took a shot that went viral to the solar plexus unguarded from Thor, what's his name, the, the, the strongest man literally in recorded human history. And then you wound up with a, a, a breathing problem that could have killed you in your next fight. And no one can tell me those two things are not related. Did it's you not. do anything stupid leading up to this fight or was it a regular training camp, Theo? No, it's not stupid at all. I mean, I should have called Dwayne Rock Johnson to hit me in the stomach too. You know, so it's uh, it's all, all those things, man. I'm, I'm a crazy-ass kid, man, I and mean, that's what it is. I'm a risk-taker all the time. You know, it's not really because of what Dory did. It's honestly because of the amount of, um, of fluctuation of weight, man, the drops, the drops and drops, the continuous drops of, of, of mm -hmm. going down to 135. Listen, uh, I mean, I, made, I was fighting at 135 at 14 years old, you know, so that's basically almost 10 years in that weight class, you know, so of course it's going to do something to your body. You know, I'm happy now, you know, 140, I feel great, my energy is up the roof, and I just can't wait to give everyone a show. And uh, just, it, this is not the take back, this is the takeover takeover. It's not the take back, it's, it's the takeover squared, or the takeover times two. All right, you're at 140, like e, you fought e at the highest level, squared. and you were successful at the highest level, 
<laughs> That's right. And at the highest level, how long before you want, like, what are your plans at 140 now? I, I'm not asking you to look past campus, but I'm sure you have an idea of what you want to do and how fast at junior welterweight. You see this crown right here? It says five times. I'm looking to be ten-time champion, you know, in two different divisions. You know, I did it at 135. Now I'm looking forward to doing it at 140. You know, it's basically my main prime goal is to become a two-time undisputed world champion. You know, and uh, it's how we do it, you know. So the likes of Josh Taylor, I know right now they're lining up with the WBC for the vacant against uh, Pedraza and Prograce. You know, so these are matchups that are definitely going to come up in the near future. And um, we're definitely going to put out there and just give you guys all a, a show, you know, make these fights happen. That's really what the whole fans want and they need. Tail and Prograce, Tail and Taylor. Boy, those are some good matchups. I mean, it has great a great name to, to everything. To Teofimo Lopez. Hey. Let's go. For sure. Great to have you back in the <laughs> ring. Good luck tomorrow night. Absolutely. Uh, thank can't you. Can't wait to see it. Thank you, guys. And thank you for this. The... Teofimo Lopez when he's in the ring. Thanks, champ. Already. Thank you for the love and support, guys. Much love. Much more coming right up. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back inside Resorts World here in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. This is boxing. This is Top Rank, presented by Hall of Fame boxing promoter Mr. Bob Arum. Our fight week is brought to you by Samaritan, starring Sylvester Stallone, coming to Prime Video August 26th. Also brought to you by Bud Light, the official beer of celebrations, and by Boost Mobile. Money is power, and diehard batteries and advance auto parts. It all happens tomorrow night, Saturday, August 13th. The undercards begin at 3.40 Pacific time on ESPN+. Plus. And then we move over to the network ESPN at 7 p.m. Pacific. Again, tomorrow, August 13th, 3.40 Pacific on ESPN+. Plus. Let's get these undercards weighed in. Our first bout scheduled for four rounds in the lightweight division. Please welcome from Mexico City, Mexico, Juan El Fierros Castaneda and his opponent from Brisbane, California, Charlie Sheehy. First on the scale, Juan El Fierros Castaneda. One thirty three point eight. One thirty three point eight for Castaneda. One thirty three point eight. Next on the scale, Charlie Sheehy. One thirty four point four. One thirty four point four for Charlie Sheehy. This bout scheduled for four rounds in the lightweight division. Juan El Fierros Castaneda, Charlie Sheehy, four rounds in the lightweight division. Our next bout scheduled for six rounds in the junior welterweight division. Six rounds in the junior welterweight division from Delano, California. Esteban Stonehands Munoz and his opponent from Cuaguas, Puerto Rico. Omar New Era Rosario. First on the scale, Esteban Stonehands Munoz.
140.6 for Munoz. His opponent from Caguas, Puerto Rico, Omar New Era Rosario. One forty point eight. One forty point eight. One forty point eight for New Era Rosario. This bout is scheduled for six rounds in the junior welterweight division. Esteban Stonehands Munoz, Omar New Era Rosario, six rounds in the junior welterweight division. Our next bout scheduled for six rounds in the featherweight division. Please welcome from Coconut Creek, Florida, D'Angelo Fuentes and his opponent from Cincinnati, Ohio, Duke Reagan. First on the scale, D'Angelo Fuentes. One twenty five point six. One twenty five point six. One twenty five point six for D'Angelo Fuentes. His opponent from Cincinnati, Ohio, Duke Reagan. One twenty six point six. One twenty six point six for Duke Reagan. This bout scheduled for six rounds in the featherweight division from Coconut Creek, Florida, D'Angelo Fuentes from Cincinnati, Ohio, Duke Reagan. Six rounds in the featherweight division. Our next bout is scheduled for six rounds in the middleweight division. Please welcome from Youngstown, Ohio, Victor Tony, his opponent from Alexandria, Virginia, Troy, the Transformer Isley. First on the scale, Victor Tony. One fifty six point eight. One fifty six point eight for Victor Tony, his opponent from Alexandria, Virginia, Troy, the Transformer Isley. One fifty six on the nose, one five six for the Transformer Isley. This bout is scheduled for six rounds in the middleweight division from Youngstown, Ohio, Victor Tony, from Alexandria, Virginia, Troy, the Transformer, Isley, six rounds in the middleweight division.
Our next bout is scheduled for eight rounds in the junior lightweight division. Please welcome from Mexicali, Mexico, Abraham Fili Montoya and his opponent from Las Vegas, Nevada, Andres Savage Cortez. First on the scale, Abraham Fili Montoya. One thirty-one on the nose. One three-one for Montoya. His opponent from Las Vegas, Nevada, Andres Savage Cortez. One thirty point six. One thirty point six for Cortez. This bout scheduled for eight rounds in the junior lightweight division. Abraham Fili Montoya, Andres Savage Cortez, eight rounds in the junior lightweight division. Our final bout to weigh in this afternoon is scheduled for eight rounds in the featherweight division. Please welcome from Culiacan, Mexico, Eddie Dinamita Valencia and his opponent from Texcoco, Mexico, Jose Enrique El Ejecutor Vivas. First on the scale, Eddie Dinamita Valencia. One twenty-seven point six. One twenty-seven point six for Dinamita Valencia and his opponent from Texcoco, Mexico, Jose Enrique El Ejecutor Vivas. One twenty-seven point eight. One twenty-seven point eight. One twenty-seven point eight for El Ejecutor Vivas. This bout scheduled for eight rounds in the featherweight division from Culiacan, Mexico, Eddie Dinamita Valencia from Texcoco, Mexico, Jose Enrique El Ejecutor Vivas, eight rounds in the featherweight division. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our undercard weigh-in. Again, a reminder, all action begins tomorrow, Saturday, August 13th, 3.40 Pacific Time on ESPN Plus, and then we move over to the network ESPN at 7. As always, this is boxing. This is Top Rank. We'll see you tomorrow for the fights.